Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome to day four of Heritage Bank's virtual seminar in commemoration of International Women's Day. Thank you so much for joining us again today. This is the fourth day we've had day one, two, three, and today is day four. On day one, we spoke about finances and how to plan for your future as a woman. You must have budget, you must have a plan B, and then you must um, take care of your finances properly so that you don't suffer and you can cater to all your needs. And in, on day two, we talked about striking the balance as a woman. We had Mrs. Mary Akubemes speak to us about your different roles in the society as a woman, a sister, a daughter, maybe a mother or a wife or a sibling or a relative and how the key thing that distinguishes your ability to be able to succeed in all these areas is you. You must make up time to take care of yourself. That was the biggest takeaway for me from that session. Yesterday, we talked about women's health, especially our reproductive health. How key it is for you to take care of yourself. We talk about menstruation, fibro, family planning, different things, and it was a very interactive session Yesterday, we had so many questions coming in with Dr. Obehi, and it was an amazing session. Today, we are going to be talking about sugar, spice, and all things nice. And we'll be hearing from Mrs. Dokas Okobi. Mrs. Dokas Okobi is a wife, a mother of two lovely kids. She's a lawyer and a cake designer by profession. So if you've heard of infusion cakes, you would know Mrs. Dockers Kobe. She's the brain behind it. She obtained her law degree from Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. She's also the founder of the South South Law Students Association, a Nigerian law school, and a graduate of the International Culinary Center in New York, where she followed her passion in cake design and desserts. Mr. Kobe's innate gift has helped her in paying attention to details and the sophistication that has been demonstrated in her career. She is the owner and creative director of Infusion Cakes, like I said earlier, where she also teaches people from all walks of life pursuing their passion in cake designing. Her favorite quote is, follow your passion and you will never work a day in your life. And I believe this is so true. So before we welcome Mrs. Okobi, we want to sincerely apologize for the time, the technical challenges experienced at the beginning, network issues and all, we're really sorry for the delay. And when the question and answer session is open, please feel free to put in any question you have. And after her session, which will last for 30 to 40 minutes, we can take your questions. Thank you so much. So I'll be handing over to Mrs. Akobi. Mr. Akobi, you're welcome. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Ma. You're welcome. How are you? Fine, thank you. So the floor is okay. yours. Um, everyone can hear you, I, I believe. OK, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is having a great um, start this morning and a very blissful morning. Um, as she has introduced me earlier, I am Mrs. Dr. Sokobi. Um, owner and creative director of Infusion Cakes in Lekki. And it is an honor, it's a privilege to be able to be here to talk to you and give you my own input in what it means to be sugar and spice, all things nice for the International Women's Day five days virtual seminar. Okay, first I'll do a brief introduction about myself, personal, um, myself. So I am 
someone who is outgoing, I am someone who is determined by nature. If I want to do something, my heart is in it. There is no stopping me. I am, um, so you, you can call that being focused. I'm also very artistic in nature. I've always not known that since I was a kid. Hence me being a cake decorator, which is something I fell in love in my final year in school and found the passion and knew that I could transfer my artist side into cake design. And I loved the whole process of it. Um, I'm a mother of two, as she said earlier on, and um, it's as a woman, it's interesting when you have to juggle being a wife, a mother, a business owner. I'm sure some people can relate to it. Um, it's a bit of a challenge sometimes, but um, I always have this sixth sense that God gave us a special power to handle things, but it's physically emotionally and as a business owner too i go through some challenges some days are good some days are bad but it doesn't stop me from forging ahead from moving forward from achieving my goal my plans for the business um and in all of that, it is easy as a woman to get lost. Oh, I am juggling being a wife. I am juggling being a mother. I am juggling being a business owner. And sometimes you can forget yourself. And be bare. It is not, um, how will, it's not easy. But it is something you have to be conscious about. There are some days I don't want to leave my bed. You know, I just want to sleep. There are some days I don't feel like putting on makeup. But whether we like it or not, in the world today, your appearance plays a huge role in whatever you're doing. If you're going to an interview, you're not going to arrive looking tattered. You're going to clean up. You're going to look good. Because before you open your mouth, you're being judged by your appearance, especially as women. You have to know how to carry yourself. Yes, it can be quite demanding sometimes can be stressful sometimes, sometimes you don't just want to. But what helps me every day is knowing that, hey, I'm doing it for myself. Something as simple as just putting on a lip gloss makes me feel good. You understand? I don't know if other women can relate, but I put on lip gloss. I know I'm putting on my lip gloss on, on live, but I put on a lip gloss and already feel good. You understand? There's just this feeling of empowerment it brings. You rub powder, whether it's foundation, whether you contour, you see a lot of um, live Facebook, um, Instagram, um, videos of women with oh contouring or they do their face or this one that they go like ba 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 and voila you see the transformation it's empowering and I can relate this to my cakes in the process of starting my cake now I'm going to be um, using a lot of references from the industry, my industry, to make it easier to understand what I'm saying. Now, first we mix the sugar, the butter, the eggs. And to me, I see that as the behind the scenes of me going through different challenges as a woman. 
we put it in the mixer, we weep, we beat. Every day it's not going to be rosy. You understand? Every day is not going to be exactly the way you want it to go. But that process, the mixing, the beating, that process is preparing you for something better. I don't want to leave my bed today, but probably maybe if you decide to leave your bed and look good, you might run into someone and say, hey, let's go here. And before you know, you're meeting some people that will give you a contract and blah, blah, blah. Imagine if you're looking tattered. Now from mixing, we pour into the pan, we bake, which is the period where the cake is now transformed from liquid to a solid form. And I also interpret that in my life as a woman, that no matter the ups and downs, there's our own issue, there's um, economic issue, you understand? As a business owner, ever since this lockdown, or in fact, let me rephrase that. Since I started my business, I can tell you, let me use um, flour or sugar. Let me use sugar as a point of reference. Um, when I started in 2014, sugar was going for 6,500. Over the years, sugar has increased from 6,500 to 10,500, uh, 14,500. In fact, in 2000 and, is that 2013? No, no. 2000 and um, anyway, one of the 2000, like two, three years ago, sugar increased to 20,000. Imagine going through that yo yo experience as a business owner. In every sector, um, inflation in the country has affected different businesses so it's not as if it's peculiar to us but you're seeing that when you're supposed to be making profit you're adjusting price you're trying to explain to customers that all oh, this all oh, that you understand all these challenges if you don't give up which you shouldn't and you find a way to walk around it just like the cake that is baking in the oven. You will come out with all the ingredients and everything that has been thrown at you. You will come out looking solid and tasting sweet. But it doesn't end there. Now, some people, and I will attest to this, very few people want a plain cake. Oh, I don't want icing on my cake, but very few. There is no way you walk into my establishment and see me display a plain cake in my showcase. Why? Because there's this cherry that people eat with their eyes first. And that is also applicable in we humans. I might see someone from afar because it's natural, it's part of our nature for most of us to be judgmental. Just by seeing someone's appearance. So I see someone from a fan, I go, oof, wow, she's having a bad day. Um, probably she's not, maybe she's just not in the mood. You understand? Um, if I'm conducting interview and someone comes in looking unkept, or at least not well put together, I'm already judging the person's appearance from hygiene to how the person carries themselves, how the person looks, all of this. We all do that. So it's not foreign, it's not new. 
imagine yourself as a cake and you come to me, oh, I want a cake and I give you a plain cake for your birthday. You're not going to like that. But if I decide to design the cake, put icing on it, your foundation, your BB cream, CC cream, I put a little um, border design, depending on what I'm doing. So you can interpret that with your eyeliner, just like mine. I don't like to do my eyebrows every day. So I opted for, um, what do they call it? Microblading. So that I wake up, I wash my face, I put my lip gloss, I'm out. Sometimes I just use simple Claire mascara. I don't know if you can see that. Claire, not black mascara, just so that my eyes will pop. Now I go ahead and put a little sprinkle, a little rosette, a little flower, and beautify the cake. And I put it in display or give it to my clients. The feedback you will hear without them even tasting the cake is, wow, this is so beautiful. Oh my God, you exceeded my expectation. Oh, this is just perfect and all of that before they even eat the cake. These are the stages I used to apply. Not every time, sometimes to my everyday life because this is what I do every day. I compare myself to a cake. You understand? I have to go through the process. I have to go through the process of being battered by economic challenge, financial challenge, um, mental, physical, whatever challenge. I'm on the plus side. I remember when people used to have a lot of opinions because I used to be skinny and I added weight. Oh, you've added weight, you should lose the weight, blah, blah, blah. And back then it affected me. I didn't know how to carry myself. I didn't know how to dress myself. I was frustrated and I saw that I wasn't doing myself any good. I had to look really hard in the mirror. I said, babe, you're beautiful. Nobody's going to do that for you as a woman, even as a human being. So we're not just talking about women now. As a human being, nobody's going to. Yeah, you might have some friends once in a while will come to you up. But if you do not believe in yourself, that's not going to work. If you do not believe in what you do, if you do not believe in how far you can go and push yourself, it's a total waste of time. So I always look, till now I do it, I look at the mirror. I look at myself and I'm like, wow, you're beautiful. Look at that cheek. You understand? You talk to yourself. You're smart. Only you. You understand? You you come up with this idea, come up with this idea with God's help. Wow, you're strong. You can walk round the clock. You understand? And still come out looking fabulous. I had to give myself continuous pepper to accept who I had become. This fabulous plus size woman. And yes, my husband had been doing that since, but I never appreciated it until I looked at myself and said, you know what, girl, I'm going to dress you up. So I say experimenting. What will work with this body? What do I feel comfortable with? What's my dress sense? How do I do my makeup? How do I make myself feel good? You understand? Sometimes I call up my friends, let's go out. Going out, definitely you have to look sweet. You have to look good. So all that helped boost my confidence that now for some reason nobody talks about my weight i've not been conscious 
of what people say because I am confident in myself. I walk into a room with my chest out, my head high, and my face and body perfectly done. And it gives me confidence that I look good. So I can walk up to any client and be like, this is this, this is that, and they will stop and listen because I am taking care of me because I am confident. All these things add to it. Going back to the cake illustration, after they've seen the beauty of the cake, then I have to cut into the cake to taste it. If the cake is, wasn't done properly, it will be spit out. Now, which leads me to an advice my father gave me. And he said, I think I was going into university, my year one, and it was the first time me leaving the house by myself and all of that. And he said, daughter, don't be too sweet because they will lick you up. Don't be too bitter to speak you out. Know when to be considerate. Know when to put yourself out there and know when to step back and observe. Back then, I didn't really understand what he was talking about. It's like normal parental advice. So I didn't get it. But that's um, saying, that talk stuck with me. For some reason, it just stuck with me. Now, sugar and spice, all things nice, all things nice. As women, as humans, we have to know when to balance. Life is about balancing. Whether it's the way you talk, down to your health, food, you cannot eat more carbs more than you eat more <coughs> of protein or fat, which is referred to as balanced diets. You should know how to balance every single thing. And that is what I took from it. I should know how to not be too, how do I put it? Too out there, too overly sweet. Because when your cakes are too sweet, what happens? Customers complain, it's too sweet. I couldn't eat it. Which leads to us researching and adjusting ingredients, sugar quantity and all of that to give the perfect, perfect bite. That when you taste it, it's like, wow, this is amazing. That can also be interpreted or um, what's the right word to use. As human beings, we can also relate that. Just as my dad said, if you're too sweet, they lick you up. So you need to know how to strike the balance. If you're too overmade, someone will say, whoa, she looks like a masquerade. Oh, don't you think it's a bit too much? You understand? Everything has to be done in moderation. I don't know if you guys are understanding me. <laughs> I hope um, I'm making sense. Now, um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and talk about business um i run from time to time i run um a class a baking class for both men and women to encourage it's still tied up to sugar spice and sugar and all of that so all things nice now from the earliest days, from my mother and father, 
they've always been people who are very generous, always give back. In fact, it was so annoying that sometimes my folks will have like very little and they'll rather give more than half of that, if not give up all and manage. That used to annoy me. But I didn't know they were instilling the habit of giving, the habit of being compassionate towards your fellow human beings in me. As I grew older, I said during some of the things I hated that they did. So, which also transpired in my business. Now, some of my classes, I've had some colleagues say, classes are really cheap. Now you get um, my beginner's class for 70, 35, depending on what and what um, the what is going to be taught. And I see same class for 120, 150. And I keep getting asked like, why are you cheaper with your classes? And it's simple. I want people to be able to afford in as much as um, I don't want to lose out. I should have the money back for the ingredients, but not necessarily focusing on immense profits because I want to be able to give back. Give back to women, give back to men, pick up a skill you understand something you really, really love to do. I studied law, but I wasn't crazy about law. Yes, I formed a law student association. I'm a problem solver. And I always um, look for, oh, if there's a problem here, how do I solve this problem? So when I followed my passion in cake design and techniques. And I got into the industry and I got comfortable and increased my skill. I was like, okay, how can others benefit from me? How can others learn from me? Okay, I paid in dollars to school. I can be charging people that kind of amount, given that one, this is Nigeria, a lot of people are going through financial challenges and all of that. How can I give back? Okay. Why not cut down the cost? If everybody is doing a hundred and something plus, cut yours down by 70% so that it can be affordable. Let it be a means that people really, those that are really interested in doing cake designs and techniques or interested in baking or in pastry, bread, can come in learn the basics. I'm not about teaching advanced or whatever. My main focus is beginners, those that just want to get introduced into the business. Learn the basics, learn the business aspect of it so that you can be empowered. Take yourself out there, you understand. Start up a business and I continue to mentor my students, my ex-students, most of them have started their own business. Um, they call me from time to time, oh, how do I do this? I'm having this challenge and all of that. Some of them have become very, very good friends with, which had always been the focus, empowering people, people around me empowering them in style <laughs> because um, my class, apart from teaching you how to bake a cake and decorate a cake, I talk about this a lot. You have to look good, you understand. 
you have to invest in yourself physically mentally you understand intellectually you have to invest in yourself because whether you like it or not um, people are going to perceive those other areas you understand and that could bring you much bigger things i don't know if you get where i'm coming from like i earlier said people judge you by appearance first just as you judge other things whether it's a preacher or a cake that is plain baked or decorated so you have to know how to put yourself together while executing what you plant, which is what I tell my students all the time. So I don't know how long I've gone for. Um, not really much of a talk, <laughs> but um, If anyone has any question, I would like to make it more like a dialogue so that I will just go talking on and on and on and on. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dawkins. It's been an amazing session. Thank you for all you shared. Thank you so much how to spice up our lives and you know see the different things that we go through as that bathroom process that now presents us as beautiful in the end, you know, like a very well designed cake. Thank you so much. I'm sure Thank that you. everyone who participated has gained a lot. So let's go into our question and answer section and see the questions that people have asked so that we can just have that dialogue you're talking about. Yeah. OK, so I have some comments I can read out. Is that OK? Yes, please. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. OK, someone says, wow, this is great. Pep talk yourself to great confidence. See your battering as a process that will be creating a beautiful cake or human. You know, that's 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 a key point you made. And I got that, you know, so thank you so much. For that. Um, I'm not sure we have any other questions, but I wanted to just ask, you know, personally, you talked about the cake battering process and all that. Are there specific tips you can give as women? You know, because sometimes a woman can be so busy that she doesn't have time to do the appearance and everything. Yeah, what are the specific exactly. tips you can I have give? been, yeah, I have been that woman, that battered woman. You understand? That's why I said I had to pet talk myself to confidence. When I first had my first child, um, unfortunately, my mom is late. So I didn't have the whole Omugwa thing as a first mom. The process was new to me. I had to do a lot of research. Going through it, I was horrible, looking so horrible. I hardly took care of myself. My clothes, I just put on T-shirts and trouser you understand and stomach out of the house and just pack my hair once sometimes wear bathroom sleepers so i have been that woman you understand then um also in terms of business sometimes um you come to work and you're seeing that ah, how many cakes are that we had today and is below your expectation or oh, nothing at all. I'm very real, I'm very firm. And you're thinking about the rent you're going to pay, the staff you're going to pay, the running costs and everything. And I'm saying, okay, some months you're like, oh, I can't wait afford to pay myself. So, where will I get money to start spending to buy lipstick and all of that? You understand? What time do I have to be looking good and feeling good when there's so much chaos going on? I have a new baby to take care of and I have another baby business I'm dealing with. 
I don't have time for myself. Why? Why even bother? But that's the lie of the devil. You understand? There's this new um, Instagram or TikTok, this thing going on, saying going on, which really caught me. And he says, uh, my sister, don't look like your problem. Make your hair, do your nails, and be beautifully broke. And it's the truth. It's it's it stayed with me. I'm like, oh wow, the person that came up with this made sense. You understand? Be beautifully broke. No matter the challenges you're going through, how first you first. You understand? You have to take care of yourself first, mentally and physically. Mentally, you have to be sound. You have to believe in yourself. Nobody is going to do that for you, whether you like it or not. If you need to pray, you pray. You understand? If you need to meditate, you meditate, but you need to do that for yourself. If not, whatever business you're doing or whatever work you're doing, whatever you're doing in general, if you're not mentally sound, mentally stable, you're not going to achieve much. That ginger will not be there. You understand? That zeal to get up, go forth and do the work will not be there. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then physically too. <laughs> not just when eating in a bag. Is it not my business I'm going to? Or is this not the office I'm going to? Who is looking at me? There are people looking at you. You understand? Your next client, your next customer, your next this thing. Are, you don't know who you will run into. You understand? Hence your mental stability, hence your physical appearance. So that on the spot, I've had situations where, oh, hi, hi, oh, how are you doing? You look good, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I do this. You understand? You're confident. You know, oh, I'm into this, I'm into that. Oh, really? Okay, I have this coming up. You're talking about your business. You're networking. You never know who you're running to. And before you know, boom, that person has reached out to you. But imagine you looking at that and not being confident in yourself. You don't even want to approach anybody. You understand? So that battle process is not meant to keep you down. It's meant to shape you. You understand? A lot of people be feel, oh, so many adversaries come in. I'm so stressed. Let me go and hide. That's not what you're supposed to do at that moment. You're supposed to soar above it. Easier said than done. But I've done it. You understand? Going through the different challenges, be it family, be it being a new mom, be it being um, a new business owner, whatever challenge you're going through, the battle process shouldn't be seen as a way to keep you down. You understand? It should be seen as a way to build yourself. It's a creation process. What can I do better? How can I step up better? You understand? Sometimes if I don't have a cake to do, I take a dummy. You understand? Oh, what can I create? I start to sketch. I have my sketchbook. I always have my sketchbook on my table. It's time to sketch. Let me create something. And I use a styrofoam, create a cake light structure and transfer my creativity or what I've sketched onto the cake. Take a picture of it and post it. And before you know, you start seeing likes. And before you know, oh, I want that cake. You did, I want that cake. But I was a dummy. And that happened when things were not going as I expected. So it's a time to not be down, but it's time to build yourself up. That's what the whole process is for. You understand? A building process to get you to an expected end, a great end. I don't know if I answered your question. Yes, you did. You did so well. You did so well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Okay.
So there's another question here asking about, I'm a lawyer myself with creative interest and comfortable in leveraging all my strengths. How do you think parents can accept that forcing traditional Obonga courses don't lead everyone to fulfillment and reward? So basically, I think this person is asking, I'm a lawyer, but I have creative interest. How can parents, you know, support me? And not the typical parent basically want their child to be doctor, lawyer, and all that. So how would you um, advise this person? Okay, um, from my personal experience, I never wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be an actress, actually. Like I said, I was born with this creative this thing. My mom wanted to be a lawyer, but she did not study the law. So I was the fall person for it. Okay, since I didn't study law, you're either doing law or you're doing medicine. You understand? And typical African parents and African home, you dare not say, when are you boys? You cannot say, ah, but I want to do this. You will say, yes, no problem. You understand? I did do the law, but I knew at the back of my mind, this is not what I wanted to do. So while I was in school, I started acting. Sun City and this thing, and I was shown on TV here in Nigeria. And my mother saw me and called my dad, your daughter is on TV, your daughter is on TV. You understand? Without telling them. I think for my mom, that was the first time she was really listening and seeing that, okay, probably law isn't really what this girl wanted. You understand? Maybe I should start supporting this artistic part of her. If you don't show them, most parents, I can't speak for all, but most parents, if you don't show them, they won't be able to support you. They have to see for themselves and they have to see that you're serious about it. You understand? The bottom line is that they want you to be comfortable in life. You understand? Can this thing you're doing bring money for you? Can it put food on your table? You understand? Here's the African mentality. At least lawyer, you will make money. Doctor, you will make money. Engineer, you will make money. You understand? You can build house. You can be comfortable because a lot of our um, forefathers or our parents came from humble beginnings. You understand? So they want you to do better than they did. But you have to show them as a creative person, this is what you can do. This is a God-given gift. We're not like the Oibos that or the white people that oh, from childhood, when they notice that you're this kind of person, they encourage you. You have to encourage yourself to show them and convince them beyond reasonable doubt that this is what you want to do. And even after doing that, my dad said, no way, you cannot appear on TV. Are you okay? Why would you do that? Why would you be acting? This, that, 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 that is irresponsible. You understand? I said, okay, and I stopped acting. And then, unfortunately, by my fourth year, my final year, I stumbled into cakes. Another area to channel my creative side. And I remember I was writing my, what do they call it again, project work. And I really, really wanted to know the business aspect of caking and pastry and baking and all of that. And I applied for a diploma to study um, business management while writing my project, my final project. It was a hustle, but without telling my parents, I went ahead and did it. And by the time I graduated from school, I came back home and I said, oh, look, I also graduated with a diploma and I have like business management, strategic management, customer service, marketing, blah, blah, blah. And they were shocked. I'm not kidding you. This is something I did not tell them I was doing. From my pocket money, I paid for it. I invested in myself. Because I knew at the end of the day, I wasn't going to do this law. And how did I know that? Right from year one, when I come home for holidays, my parents would ship me to law firm. I will go and work in a law firm. And I was doing that for three years. 
You understand? And I still did not fall in love with it. So I needed something I was passionate about. I was driven. You know. When I came back, I showed the certificate. Oh, very good. That's good of you. However, you still have to go to law school. I said, okay, this is the deal now. After law school, I will give you that certificate. At least I'm a graduate now. I can talk with respect. I'll give you that certificate, but in return, you will sponsor me to culinary school. I thought, oh, don't worry, we'll see. Um, nah, 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 nah. And I knew that that wasn't enough. So back then, there was this, before Jumia, there was this um, platform that was in existence where you can buy things, buy food before the Jumia existed. And I registered on that platform for Valentine's Day. And in the middle of the night, my folks come back late or they wake up early in the morning. They see me in the kitchen baking. Then my father will make um, jokes like, you're finishing my gas, so I hope you're putting that in your price. I hope you're going to pay me back for this generator you're using and things like that. Hello, hello, Mrs. Dockers. We can't hear you anymore. Hello, are you there, ma'am? Um, I don't know. Can we confirm if we can hear Mrs. Dockers? Um, because I can't hear her anymore. So, if we can just put in the chat session, can we hear her? Ms. Dockers? Mrs. Dockers? Hello, Mrs. Dockers. Okay, so while we are waiting for her to reconnect, if we have questions, we can put them in the chat session so that she will take them when she when she comes, comes back, while we try to resolve this issue. Just give us a few minutes. I will try and reach her. Yeah. Can you hear me? Welcome back, Ma. Yes, I can hear you now. But okay, can you hear sorry me? about that. Yes, I can. Okay. Okay, so we're listening to you. Okay, so um he will make things say things like you're using my fuel and all of that, hopefully you're putting in the price. And fourteenth came and these orders came in. In, I think I had, if I'm not exaggerating, I had more than 100 order because I put cupcakes for 2,500. So it was like the deal of a lifetime. And three days before vows, I said like prepping the box, the packaging and everything. And the whole sitting room was filled up with cartons. And my father would walk by and look at me and throw his face one side. Then two days to Valentine and I'll say baking the cakes. So I just kept baking the cupcakes, baking cupcakes, turning out cupcakes, you understand? To cool them, I'll put them in the sitting room on the chair on the dining table, everywhere. Valentine's Day, that was a learning, my first learning experience in business. I started loading, I didn't have a driver. I did not have anybody to help me. 
it was me, myself, and I. <laughs> and initially, it started well, kicks started going out, going out, going out. And the demands became much more. I had to go and pick up my younger sister from school. I started becoming very panicked. People were calling, where's my cake? Oh, what's wrong with you? Da, da, da. You poor frauds, this, da, da, da. And I started shaking. And I remember my dad coming back for lunch and he saw me, I had not slept for two days. My eyes were like red. And I was shaking there and panicking. I felt like there's this, if you've not slept for two days, I've never experienced it, but if you don't sleep for like two days, shut your eyes, everything becomes a bit hazel. You understand? A bit foggy. The day becomes a bit foggy. And that's the state I was in. And my father was like, hmm, you better get some rest. I said, how can you tell me to get rest? How can you tell me to sleep? People are calling me. I'm going to disappoint them. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, to cut the long story short, that was the day he saw the passion, the sheer passion for what I wanted to do. And since that day, he supported me. So to answer your questions, depending on your parents, you understand, but I feel by the time you show them that this is really what I want to do, come rain, come shine, you understand, no matter the obstacle, I have passion for this thing. I really want to do it. Watch me do it. You understand? By the time they start seeing all of that, don't come around. Don't come around because every parent wants to support their children's dream in as much as they want the best for their children. So they are there to support your dream. You understand? So you have to show them that you really, really want this. After that day, Talking about culinary school was no problem. Is that what you want to do? Yes, no problem. I will support you. You're sure this is what you want to do? Yes, no problem. I am solidly behind you. That is all I got. <laughs> so basically, that is it. So I just hope I answered the question correctly. Show them yes. that you really need this. Yes, you did. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dorcas. Um, we just have one or two more um, questions and then we'll take the comments we've gotten so far. So someone is asking okay. um, how much your training costs. Um, and I'll just add to that question so you can take them at once. So someone is asking, please, how much okay. does your training cost? And I think tenure, how long it, it lasts for. And someone is saying for a woman mm -hmm. over 40, Sweet spices and sugar are not really our friends, but we still long for them. How can we really partake in eating these cakes and still remain healthy? What kind of cake can we really eat with our eyes closed and not be particular about the effect of creams and sugars and coats? So the first one is about the cost of your training. And then the next one is about how um, someone can partake in eating cakes when they're over 40. What would you say to these questions, ma'am. Okay, so our training, our beginner's training class, <clears throat> presently is going for 70k, but because of the um, women's, um, International Women's Day week, we are doing a 50% slash to support women. So that's now going for 35 from today and it ends it's the training is supposed to start on the 15th so it's ending on the 13th just to support women so but regular day training goes for 70,000 and <clears throat> the training has to do with you learning how to bake the different kind of cakes different methods because I found out that a lot of people don't learn the different methods of cake which are phone method um, um, liquid method, butter method, leveling and all of that. So from the history to why your cake is like this and like that, you will be taught how to come up with your own recipes. You'll be taught, then you'll be taught some of our recipes too. 
also then you get into the art of baking and the art of decorating your cakes from buttercream fondant whipped cream and this is a two-week intense hands-on class two weeks so the first week is introducing you to everything cake baking and the processes and all of that so you have four days in the week to learn all of that then the following week is decoration each day decorating things on the final day i will need you to do your own so that i know where you are how well you've done and all of that so that's it two weeks four days in a week for two weeks and it's going for 70k if you take advantage of the slash price which is 50 percent off you're going to get it for 35 but that ends on the 13th so hurry i think today is what 11th so hurry then for the types of cakes for the kind of cake you can eat first of all i like to educate my clients cake is a treat it is not food so you're not expected to eat so much of it now in terms of health we have um, people that were diabetic have those that uh, react to gluten and different things we have special cakes like that now um, there are substitutes as opposed to using sugar we use probably dates use um, maple we use um, what is called so there are different substitutes we can use but um, in terms of flour we can use nuts based flour like almond flour coconut flour rice flour you're not going to get the typical taste cake depending on the kind of cake you order for but you're going to get a healthy cake so yes there's a <laughs> there is such thing as a healthy cake but just like everything healthy they are quite pricey <laughs> you understand so imagine the quantity of dates you're going to use to bring out the sweetness of a cake at least for it to be sweet enough for you to enjoy imagine as of the last time i checked a kg of almond flour is going for seventeen thousand so you're using almond flour or you're using um coconut flour you know that's expensive i supposed to buy 50 kg bag of flour that would buy for 14.5 50 kg one kg you see the difference <laughs> then um milk we substitute with um nut milk nut milk like almond milk or coconut milk you understand so you can actually have healthy cakes however healthy cakes are the life shell and span of the healthy cakes are very very short so main reasons why a lot of bakeries don't really do it is it's very expensive the lifespan shelf life is very very short after that day and most the second day you can have it again because sugar acts as a preservative i don't use preservatives in my cake so my cake if you keep it properly i always tell my clients if you're going to keep the cake after cutting it keep it in the freezer so the cake can last up to four days because there's no preservative after four days or more you're on your own and sometimes they come back to me when they preserve it properly and like oh i bought the cake last week and it still tastes real good i said okay amen for you but after four days I will advise not to eat the cake except it's well preserved in the freezer. Now, for healthy cakes, healthy <laughs> cakes, um, at most two days, but you can have that. If you have any health challenge, if you have, um, you just want to be healthy because of your age and your sweet suit, there are options for you, definitely. They're just pricey, that's all.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma, for that um, answer and response. I think it, it, it's very, very um, clear and he answers the questions very well. OK, so I'll be asking our last set of questions as we round up because, you know, we have to round up at this oh, okay. point. OK, so someone is asking, did you start your business before you got married? Also, what kind of challenges have you had or have you faced in business with your staff? that you have surmounted or, okay, surmounted. What were the learning points? Thank you. So I'll go through that again. Did you start your business before you got married? What kind of challenges have you faced in business with your staff that you have surmounted? And what were your learning points? Then we have a comment about the passion drive, commitment to what you believe and show evidence for it. So we just have some nice comments here. That I can read at the end. Okay. And please, while you answer the question, could you also um, just leave how people can reach out to you at the end oh. so that those who are asking how they can reach out to you can respond to you? So in addition to that question, um, there's one more that I'll just add to that. Someone is asking, do you find baking business fulfilling? You know, so in addition to the questions I've listed out. Oh, OK. All right, you will find baking business fulfilling. OK, let me answer the first question, which is um, if I started the business before I got married, yes, I did. And my husband is a lawyer too. Uh, when we met, we met when I was in law school. So when he had we were dating and we heard that after law school I was going to culinary. I still remember vividly. He was like, Are you okay? It's like, how do you mean? It's like, how can you leave law? Because he's of this mindset, one of those people that man law is the ultimate law is as a bad star. You understand the law. So <laughs> It wasn't, it was shocking to see that after all these years spent in school, you want to go back and then kick. You understand? It's it's something that he really looks down on. And I said, yes, I'm going to learn cake, whether you like it or not. And I will come back and do business and stuff. So say, okay, can cake business um, build a house for you? I said, yeah, we're going to find out now, right? But it's really not about whether it can build a house for me. If it can build a house for me, yes. Once I'm able to run the business well, you understand. Um, I follow my business plan all the time, opening other branches. Yes, it can build just like any other business, a house for me to put food on the table. And to God be the glory is doing that. You understand. So yes, I said before marriage. Um, challenges I faced with my staff. Oh gosh, this is typical in, in all businesses in Nigeria. Staffing, staffing is always a problem. So, um, <laughs> because I learned to trade before going into it, I'm not afraid when they mature. Part of the challenges I've heard is, I've had rather, is staff not showing up to work, you understand? Or just all together, just stopping work. Or um, making a mistake on an order and you have to deal with it. Space that I had to deal with. So, in to be if my cake decorator does not show up, because we do the cake, I can do the cake. You understand? But immediately I start looking for another staff. So, for a while I had problem with keeping the staff, and I really did not know what the issue was. If it was because they felt I was too intimidating, like because when they come, most of the decorators like, 
had to do this and not to do that, then you now find out that you really don't know anything. And, and most people they must have worked with probably did not learn the trade or are self-taught. So they are still going through the process, through the learning process. So they go and show themselves there. But when they come to me, it's like, okay, this woman knows, <laughs> knows her onions. So most times it scares them. You understand? Most times the long hours, because there are several times I have a bed in my office. <laughs> there are several times where we have to walk really late into the morning. You understand? And not have a break, good enough break that will continue the next day before we close. So it's not everybody that can handle such pressure. So um, then in other departments like baking, you know, the process is very stressful. You need someone who is mentally and physically strong, whether you're a baker or a decorator, and someone who has genuine passion for what they are doing. If they don't have that passion, they won't last. They won't last because I can, hopefully, I'm a good boss, I'm a nice boss, <laughs> hopefully. So it won't be me chasing. Yes, if you don't do something right, I will shout, I will penalize you, I will correct you. But it's mainly, I think, because of the long hours and how stressful it was that it was safer for me to get people that stayed put. Not necessarily because of salary or my boss is a mean boss. Because I carry my staff along. I tell them, you're shareholders. You are the backbone of this business. If you're not here, if you don't do your work, this business will not flow the way it should flow. So we have to work as a team. You are part of this business. You have to be seeing yourself as part of infusion cakes. And they know that. So over the years, God has been faithful. I think part I'm okay now because I have staff that are dedicated to the work, that love what they do, incentives to encourage them like you have to clean up if you're interested in baking or decorating we teach you for free so that you can move up to the ladder up the ladder you can't remain a cleaner forever if you're a front sales rep you understand you can move up the ladder of being a manager or a supervisor and all of that. There are those incentives that will bring extra income and generally how you relate with your staff. Some people are just not easy to relate with, but there are still those that are ready to work and are easy to relate with. And over time, they come around and make life easier for you. So right now, I had people that have worked with me for four years three years so it's great okay so what have i learned in business what i've learned is not to expect so much you understand everybody we're all human beings not to expect so much from um my staff I want them to do the best, but what do I mean by not to expect so much? Like, if I'm not there, you should be able to do it exactly the way I did it. You understand? No. Everybody is learning. Even me, I'm still improving myself. So that I don't get, I, I try not to expect so much so that I don't get too disappointed. That's one of the things I've learned so that I can will myself back instead of shouting and getting angry. It can be a teachable moment for the staff and for us. Then um, another thing I've learned is the very, um, will I say very, at least be 60 percent transparent with your staff if things are not going well make them feel part of the business because i know since that really helped when they feel part of the business you see them they 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 want to know what's going on they want to know how they can help go over and beyond so you carry them along you understand um 
recently we were reading a contract that we got online that someone said that uh, part of the contract that like, if Madame Top wants and you make her repeat herself and pay 10,000 Naira and we're laughing about it and I was like you know what you people don't take me seriously in this business everybody start paying 10,000 Naira you understand make be accessible and learn that in this thing you have you have to be accessible they have to be comfortable because these are the people you come to meet every single day and they are the backbones of the business so when you invest compassion when you invest um, humanity your humanity in them if they're good people you get great results from them they'll be ready to work they'll be ready to give you their best so those are the things i learned then um do i find baking fulfilling <laughs> before i started this business i told myself i'm not going to give myself a plan b because giving myself a plan b is leaving myself to failure you understand like okay if this doesn't work then i can move on to the next no <clears throat> baking has been very very fulfilling now i studied i don't bake um i studied cake design and technique take cake design and techniques where the decorators you understand so when the cake i have bakers when the cake i can bake but i don't bake so when the cake is baked i'm the one that at my decorators that transform it into a work of art the sheer excitement of seeing a blank canvas a nude cake transform into cakes like um a mickey mouse head a castle a human face that's like the icing on the cake how can you not feel fulfilled with that that you're turning this edible this food into art into edible art it's so so fulfilling i spend hours like i said my favorite quote is when you do what you love you will not walk a day in your life i don't see myself as working i can stay 12 hours designing a cake you understand i sketch my cake i look at it put in the fondant Working on this thing, we'll step back, look at it, admire it, or disprove of what we put, go for the hack and we we'll make it better. And at the end of the day, the crowning glory is when your customer looks at it and like, whoa, oh my God. I hardly put comments on my page, but it's something I've started recently so that people will know the reaction of our clients when they get their cakes or their pastries and the most common one is wow amazing thank you thank you thank you like who doesn't want <laughs> to be thanked like that so it is it's a fulfilling thing for me and yes it did not start easy it was a bit challenging together with the economy um life situation um yeah all the hurdles we go through in everyday nigeria it, it, it is challenging it's still challenging i've had days honestly where i'm like should i even continue yesterday i called a friend of mine no day before yesterday i called a friend of mine i said babes i think i'm done i think i think i'm done she now laughs. If you are done, if you are done, then we will watch. You understand? And it's not the first time I'm saying that. Like the pressure will be so much sometimes that economic um, inflation and everything it just chokes you, and you're like, I can't do this. 
But I remember I don't have a plan B. So I like it or not, I have to look for more innovative ways, more profitable ways to keep the business going. And with that, when I'm able to find those ways, every single challenge brings me to a higher um, level. It, it, it's, it's like, whoa, I did that. Boom. Next, please. Bring it on. I'm ready. You will feel fulfilled. So yes, baking, cake decorating makes me feel fulfilled. Hope I answered the question. Yes, now, yes. if you want to reach me, <laughs> if you want to reach me, um, our Instagram handle is at Infusion Cakes NG. At Infusion Cakes NG. Um, our, if you want to reach me directly, you can send a DM by Instagram or you can send a WhatsApp message to 081. Three three one seven six six five zero. If you have any questions, um, willing to an, um, answer. If you're going to get into the industry soon, start a business, and you need tips and appliances. I never really had this when I started. Everybody was very guarded, but now there are a lot of people that are willing to share, and I'm part of that. So. If you're having any challenges, come let's challenge ourselves together <laughs> and grow in the industry. Or it mustn't be cake, but whatever you're doing, that you just need a sister, love, and encouragement. You can reach me 081 3317 Call or send WhatsApp message. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Been, we've learned so much from your story. Your personal story has really spoken to us. And you know, I totally agree with you about how when you handle something that is tough and bigger than you and you surmount it, you have more capacity for the next big thing. You know, you never, you never go small, you just go bigger. So if you handle something that was so tough now, you, it becomes easy for you. And then the next thing you're looking forward to is a tougher thing. And that's so true, especially for women. We have that innate mm -hmm. capacity to do so much okay. if only we allow ourselves stretch. And I feel that that beating process really explained all you said today. Thank you so, so much. So guys, thank you for thank joining you. us. Happy International Women's Day once again. We thank you so much for spending this time with us, with Mrs. Dockers and I. Um, please you. join us tomorrow, same time, 9 a.m. And we'll be talking about no limitations you meet our amazing speaker tomorrow. I hope you've had an amazing time. And like uh, Ms. Docker, Mrs. Docker said, you can follow them on yes. Instagram, infusioncakes.ng, or reach out to the number she called. And to catch a replay of our session today and the other sessions from day one to four, please go to our YouTube channels, um, Heritage Bank PLC, or any of our Instagram channels. You see Instagram, Twitter, we are there, Heritage Bank PLC. But for the replays, go to our YouTube channel and you see all the replays there. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. I hope you got value to Thank you so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the day. Uh, amazing women and to everyone that joined us. Thank you so much. Go and be confident and go Bye. and have a great day. Bye everyone. Bye Ma. Bye.